If you look at the title of the video, you might think that it makes no sense, and I wouldn't blame you for that. But in GURPS there are some weapons that are used with the unarmed combat skills. GURPS has three unarmed striking skills – boxing, brawling and karate. Unskilled characters use dexterity instead. Let's take a look at the weapons table in GURPS Lowtech. There are three categories of unarmed weapons. The first one encompasses universal weapons that can be used with any unarmed striking skill – boxing, brawling, karate and dexterity. The second one can only be used with brawling or dexterity. And the third one can be used with brawling, karate or dexterity. Boxers are out of luck. All these weapons have something in common. They receive damage bonuses for knowing the unarmed combat skills at a high level, just like normal unarmed attacks. If you have sharp claws or any other claws, they do not affect damage. I assume that the striking surface perk doesn't stack with these weapons either. Do not forget that these are unarmed attacks, so you do not take offhand penalties, very useful for dual wielders. Let's inspect the universal weapons first. Since the boxing skill is in there, that means that all of them enhance punches. There are only three weapons – Brass Knuckles, Mermex and Cestus. All of them deal the same damage – Thrust, Crushing. All of them have Reach C and Parry 0. The cost is low and so is the weight. Brass Knuckles are as likely to be made of horn, iron, steel or reinforced leather as brass. The wearer ignores the rules for hurting yourself when punching, but also suffers from bad grip 3. Mermex is a leather hand wrapping with sharp edges that inflict shallow cuts. This is still crushing damage, but I think it would be reasonable for this damage to cause bleeding. Mermex provides the hand DR1, but also bad grip 1. Cestus is a studded or spiked leather hand covering. It provides DR4 to the hand, but doesn't give you bad grip, unlike the former weapons. There is actually another version of the Cestus that is not on the table, but is in the text – an elbow length Cestus. This one costs twice as much, weighs four times as much and provides DR to the forearm. That is, DR4 to the arm on 1, 2, 3 on a roll of 1D. In addition, it gives plus 1 to damage not only to punches, but also to elbow strikes. I think that improving elbow drop damage would be reasonable as well. What is unclear here is how much time it takes to put on your Mermax or Cestus. If we look at GURPS Lowtech Instant Armor, then we will see that almost all gauntlets take 10 seconds to don, so I assume that Mermex and Cestus take 10 seconds as well. It's also not specified if the DR provided is flexible or not, but I assume that it is flexible. But wait, we forgot one other weapon – the Scissor Glove from Girls Martial Arts Gladiators. It is a metal tube that encloses the forearm with a protruding crescent-shaped blade. The tube provides DR5 to the forearm of the wielder. This DR is rigid, not flexible. What makes this weapon different from others? First, it's heavy – 5 pounds. It's quite expensive – $200. However, it can both thrust and swing for cutting damage, and it has reach C1. This is one of the few ways of dealing swing-based damage with an unarmed attack. The downside is that you cannot hold anything else in your hand. If you are playing a character focused on punching, then any of these weapons are very good for you. The plus one to damage might seem small, but it's actually significant for unarmed combatants. Having DR on your hands and forearms is nice, as it makes it more difficult to get hurt by a successful weapon parry and makes it easier to parry weapons. Sure, DR1 is nothing special, but DR4 or the Cestus or DR5 or the Scissor Glove is significant. It even allows you to use the parry missile weapon skill, unarmed. Now let's take a look at the second weapon group. The first weapon is a Blackjack. It is mentioned in the Brawling skill description. 
The karate skill description says that it cannot be used with a fist load or a blackjack. Later on, the improvised weapons perk was introduced. It says that it can be taken for the karate skill to be able to use it with fist loads. So if you have this perk, then you can use the blackjack. Does it cover the rest of the weapons in this section? I don't know. The blackjack is more expensive than the brass knuckles, weighs more and has a minimal strength requirement. However, it can be easily improvised. Also, the blackjack is designed to deliver a beating without obvious bruising. A diagnosis minus 2 row is required to notice the injury on a casual examination. The next weapon is the combat fan. This one has two modes of attack. A folded fan can be used as a fist load and an unfolded fan can be used to deliver cutting attacks. This mode requires one less strength, is at minus 2 to hit and does not get a damage bonus from high skill. It is kind of underwhelming, but it sure is stylish. The rest of the weapons in this group are not actual weapons, but healed punches with other weapons. Hook Sword and Tian Kung Ji Yue Dao deal thrust minus 1 cutting. Note that Tian Kung Ji Yue Dao does not take the usual minus 1 penalty to hit due to it being an exotic weapon. Back Sword and Cutlass deal thrust crushing damage. This metal hilt provides DR4 to the hand, cumulative with gloves, but cannot be used with metal gauntlets. Hilts of Hook Sword and Tian Kung Ji Yue Dao do not enclose the hand completely. DR applies only on a roll of 1 to 3 on a roll of 1D. GURPS Low Tech Companion 2 has an option of adding a partial or full basket heal to any other weapon. And now let's take a look at the final weapon group, the one that can be used with brawling, karate and dexterity, but not boxing. The bladed hand can either thrust for impaling damage or swing for cutting damage, which is great. Again, this is one of the very few ways of dealing swing-based damage with an unarmed attack. Reach, however, is only C, and swing damage is worse than that of the scissor glove. Thrust damage is better, though. Tonfa can be used for butt jabs with these skills. If you'd like to know more, check out my video about Tonfas. The last weapon is shuriken that can be wielded in melee to scratch and cut. This deals low thrust cutting damage. If you specialize on throwing shurikens, this can be your backup way of dealing cutting damage in melee. GURPS Power Ups 2 perks has the Razor Kicks perk that allows you to hold a shuriken between your toes, enabling you to use shurikens in melee with your kicks. This gives better reach and damage. This isn't the end yet, as there's even more weirder weapons. Yavara is not listed on the weapon table, but is described on the text. It is a short stick held in the fist with its ends protruding, used as a fist load and a lever. Instead of giving plus one to damage with ordinary punches, it gives plus one to damage with the hammer fist technique that defaults to brawling minus one or karate minus one. A Yawara also grants plus one to follow up roll with judo holds and locks, to injure, prevent escape, etc. Kakute is a ring with small teeth or horns that can be used to get a firm grip on an opponent and assail pressure points. A pair, one on the ring finger and one on the thumb, gives plus one to rolls to prevent a grip pulled foe from breaking free and plus one to pressure point skills when grappling, but also imposes bad grip one with weapons and other items. Twisting the rings into position for grappling or out of the way for other tasks takes a ready maneuver. So this is an unarmed grappling weapon, if you can even call it a weapon. It's on the weapon table, so it must be a weapon. GURPS Dungeon Fantasy VIII Treasure Tables has two new weapons that can be used with unarmed combat skills. The War Beak is a prowl-like wizard that can be attached to any helmet. It allows the wearer to headbutt in close combat for thrust minus one large piercing damage. 
The headbutt technique is described in GURPS martial arts. The battle fangs are a set of sharp metal false teeth. This weapon lets you bite for thrust minus one cutting damage, but impedes speech. It is usually used with brawling or dexterity, but with a biting mastery perk you can use this weapon with karate. There is a couple of rules questions that remain unanswered. The first one is weight. Some of these weapons have weight. Is it added to your normal unarmed attack effective weight when determining weapon breakage? I don't know. The second is quality. Can you make, for example, balanced brass knuckles for plus one to skill? I don't think so, even though there's nothing in the rules explicitly saying that you can't. For weapons with sharp hilts, such as the hook sword, is the damage bonus for fine or very fine quality added to hilt punches? It probably does. Does the plus one to skill from the balance quality apply to hilt punches? It probably does not, but who knows? Anyway, this is it for the so-called unarmed weapons. I hope that now you know that unarmed combat does not always mean fistfights. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.